I'm going to talk about IME. IME is our uh, parallel flash acceleration software. It's all about unlocking the potential of NVMe. Uh, what we've seen over and over and over again in this industry, DBN is the leader in data at scale. That we have lots of customers that buy the best hardware out there and they just can't get efficiency out of it. What we do at DBN is we sell bundled appliance solutions. We make sure that every possible ounce of performance and potential within your storage is unleashed and delivered directly to your application. NVMe is, you know, the, the lowest latency storage media out there. And we make sure that that you, that you actually capture that low latency with things like RDMA and very efficient software stacks. We're going to talk about that. So first of all, in the 20 years at DDN, uh, you know, I joined DDN about a year ago, and it's a very exciting company, right? For 20 years, I can't take credit for any of this. I wish I could. Uh, 20 years, DDN's been a company of first, right? The first company to, to have a terabyte per second on spinning drives way back in 2013. First company to be profitable selling object store. First company to be profitable selling open source parallel file systems. And finally, what we're talking about here, the first company to, to have a profitable uh, pair, uh, flash acceleration layer. That's what I mean. Is. So DDN is the first to realize this research dream. A lot of people have been talking for a long time, right? This was a research paper that came out of Los Alamos National Labs talking about traditional HPC storage stacks, right? What you saw was that for over a decade, every single sort of supercomputer that was delivered in HPC had the same software stack. You had a supercomputer with applications doing nasty I.O. into a parallel file system, and then periodically nice, well-behaved migrations from the parallel file system down to the tape archive. And as a storage architect, I look back on this decade with sort of like dread and horror. It was such a boring time. For users, it was wonderful, right? Like eh, every single time they got a new machine, they just ran their same application. Everything worked the same. It just went more quickly. Then what we saw in about 2015 is that uh, because of the, the idiosyncratic nature of disks as a storage media and the fact that it's easy to pack bits more densely but hard to spin them more quickly, we needed larger and larger relative numbers of disk drives. You had to put flash in there. So this. This sort of wonderful period for users was perturbed with these burst buffer file systems. Now you see people talking about object stores down below. DDN was there first. DDN was the first to deliver a parallel uh, burst buffer system. And the fantastic thing is it's completely transparent. So the users you know, are unperturbed, unmodified applications. Everything just goes fast. And they're really back in that sort of wonderful period of what I would consider stagnation and what they would consider, you know, placitude. So what is IME? IME is just a layer of NVMe that we put in between the applications running on compute nodes and the parallel file system. It's a scale-out cache layer, works for unmodified applications doing POSIX I.O. There are MPI I.O. interfaces, there's a native API if applications want. But really, it's designed for unmodified applications to just go faster and be able to realize the potential of NVMe and the low latency that it enables. Okay. IME is fabric aware. Uh, you see here, there's a, the files are data, right? To, to the application, logically, they're storing files, which is data. IME is built on top of a distributed hash table internally. That's sort of the magic of IME. It's also load aware. One of the really nice things about IME is that you've got all of these clients sending data to all of these servers. Clients have a preference for, for a particular data layout, but they will override that preference should they see that servers are slow. This is a feature that no other parallel file system has. Typically in a parallel file system, you run at the rate of your slowest component. With IME, you run at the sum of your the rates of all of your components because IME sends to each it's almost communism, right? From each according to their needs to each according. I don't quite have that right, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> One of the other great things that IME does is IME extends the lifetime of your NVMe devices, right? I mean, these are really precious resources. They're very, they're more expensive than hard drives for capacity. So you want to make sure that you really preserve their lifetimes. SSDs have this sort of disappointing feature that you can wear them out. The more that you write to them, the earlier that those devices will fail. 
uh, these uh, these NVMe devices, all SSDs, come with something called a drive right per day vendor warranty or specification, which is based on an assumption of a 4K random I.O. workload, how long the vendor says that SSD will survive. So what we've done is we've taken we've taken two SSDs, thank you very much, I need to be careful, and we did an application doing 4K random I.O. once uh, through an EXT file system, a typical file system, and once through IME. And what we see is on the y-axis, we have the reserve blocks consumed. That's just a metric that you get from an SSD. You might have heard people talking about over-provisioning in SSDs. What they do is because of this problem, they set aside extra space. They use it for other reasons as well. And as the SSD starts failing, it will take those reserve blocks and use them. The y-axis is how many of those reserve blocks are used. When you hit 100%, the next failure, there's no, there's no resilience mechanism available the SSD dies. So what we see is that we do 4K random I.O. without putting IME between the application and the NVMe device, the NVMe device fails right when the vendor says it would. Well, specifically, we had one drive right per day. The vendor says that should last for one drive right per day for five years, about 1,500 days worth of I.O., and that's exactly when it failed. Pretty close. You put IME in there, it lasts four times as long, and that's because IME does a much better job. It's aware of the idiosyncrasies in the SSD, and it does a log structure. So even though the application thinks it's doing 4K, even though the application is doing a workload that's really destructive of your precious NVMe devices, IME preserves them. So in addition to you know fantastic data rates, you also get nice uh, media preservation. Here's just a picture of, we have two IME appliances. Uh, we have a 1U10, although we only nine of those devices are available for uh, user I.O. The other is for our own commit logs, which is an important mechanism to ensure that we can buffer and cache, you know, uh, we can take advantage of buffering and caching techniques and data re-aggregation and reorganization mechanisms. Okay. Whoops, wrong way. Here's a graph of... Here we had multiple IME nodes. This was three IME nodes, so 27 devices doing I.O. We got up to 52 gigabytes per second. You can see really nice efficiency in our scaling. And by the way, this works out to 1.7 gigabytes per second per device, which is really where those devices are rated. So we're really happy that the IME software allows you to realize the potential of your NVMe. Uh, the 240 is a sim, it's just a, it's a beefier node to be for your appliance, there's 23, it's a 2U24, we preserve one of the devices ourselves, 23 for user I.O. Okay. Uh, some more performance graphs, I'm going to go quickly, I think I'm a little bit over time, you guys are probably excited for your prizes. Uh, some more of the specifications. Here's one of the things that's also really cool, we, took, we looked at that plateau of depth graph, and we said that IME is so good by preserving the lifetime. The other thing that IME does is IME protects you from poor workloads. Uh, there's a BOF tomorrow night called the IO500, which is a new benchmark for looking at the efficiency of storage systems. Um, I hope you all come to that. I'm one of the organizers, by the way, of, of IO500. One of the reasons that I was motivated to, to, to start this IO500 initiative was I was very sympathetic to a lot of users that would get onto a machine like that one terabyte per second machine that, that we delivered to Oak Ridge in 2013 and say, hey, I'm only getting, you know, like a gigabyte per second. What, what is going on? I Google and this system's supposed to do a terabyte per second. And that poor user spends weeks and weeks and weeks pulling out their hair trying to tune their I.O. And this is because I believe as a community, we as vendors have somewhat done a disservice by only reporting the hero numbers. What are the numbers? If you're, we all know that if your application is very, very well behaved, it's possible to get fantastic performance from the storage media. But there's other workloads that are really challenging, where it's really hard going through the software and the distributed locking and the false sharing and all these other things that that turn what should be parallel I/O into serial I/O. So the I/O 500 says, "Hey, go ahead and do your hero number. Show us that what is possible." but also run this really challenging I.O. to show us what is probable so the users will actually have a reasonable bounding box of expectation. 
And then I think that introduces a new way to evaluate storage systems, which is what is the degradation? What is that area between what is possible and what is probable? And that's really where IME shines. So this is the IO500 result. And on the, the easy right pattern to the hard right pattern, it's only 20% degradation. Similarly for the, for the read. Thank you. Our competitors, the data warp, it, it has very significant degradation. It hasn't figured out how to deal with those hard IO patterns at all. This is again, it's, it's, the IME is great with the degradation. Some of the competition doesn't do as well. Traditional parallel file systems don't do as well. Here's yet again, just another way to look at the same data. This is IME. I'm not going to go into it too much, but lots of different workloads. Ideally, we're doing all of the area in this spider web, right? Inside here, have you guys ever seen those weird like social experiments where they give drugs to spiders and then take pictures of their webs? So those other systems are, you know, hallucinating spiders or something. IME is number one on the IO500. There's going to be a new IO500 announced tomorrow night, but IO, IME was the, the first, the inaugural winner of the IO500. It's held that top spot for three IO500 competitions in a row. We'll find out tomorrow. I, I know, so it's hard for me to say. Uh, IME is fault tolerance. We have an exciting roadmap. Um, so th this graph just shows that entire IME servers can disappear. What you see is you see an immediate degradation as they react to that. Then there's more degradation as they rebuild the lost data to get back to the protection levels that were specified. And then they go back up once the, the rebuild is done. You fail another one and another one. All right, and I'm just going to do one more slide. I'm going to skip to it. That's the fault tolerance. Oh. Uh, uh, one of the nice things about an IDDM is we have an insight solution, which is our single pane of glass for management and monitoring. It works with IME, but it also works, you know, hopefully when you come to DDN, you get some IME, but you also get some of our other storage systems as well. They're all managed and monitored through a single pane of glass. That's called insight. Um, we also, for the first couple of iterations of IME, IME was only available as an acceleration for DDN branded file systems. But we had lots and lots of people come to us and say, you know what, I've got NFS, it's too slow. We say, well, no problem, replace it with DDN parallel file system. They say, well, you know, I'm not quite ready to make that investment yet. Isn't there some small, easy way that you could just make my existing NFS solution faster? Hey, the answer is yes, it's called IME. We didn't used to be able to offer that as a solution, but now we do. Okay, and just finally, one of the, you know, one of the other things that's a little bit disappointing maybe in some storage systems is that they all apply the same parity protection to all data. Like everything is either 8 plus 2 or it's three-way replication, which is very expensive. With IME, you can specify, you know what, hey, this data, I know how to produce it again. I can rerun my compute job anytime. So I don't want you to bother protecting it. It's not worth it. I'd rather it can just disappear and I'll recreate it. So we can do that in IME or... Hey, this data is the most important data that's ever existed in the history of humanity. Please protect the heck out of this data. We can do that as well. Thank you very, very, very much.